Hey everybody, Backpack Hack here coming at you with another trail tip, and today I'm going to show you how to make a Faraday cage out of a, well, tin can. This is what uh, they call a locking lid container. Uh, it's just a fancy name for a small garbage can. Uh, I got this at my local uh, ran farm and ranch supply store. Farmers use this for putting seed and, and pet food in and things like that, but I'm going to make a Faraday cage out of this. I'm going to show you how to, I did it. And so you can do the same thing. This is Barron's brand. It's a 10 gallon. I think it was like $18 or something like that at the local farm and ranch supply. There are a few other things you're going to need. Is first off, get yourself the book called Disaster Preparedness for EMP Attacks and Solar Storms by Arthur T. Bradley. And there is one chart in here. I won't get into the details. But on page 70, there is a chart in here that gives you the effective shield, shielding effectiveness of various enclosures. And they have fire safe bags, static bags, ammo cans, microwave ovens, foil box, compost can, garbage can, taped garbage can, and taped garbage can with static bag. I went with this taped garbage can because, according to this chart, it's the next best thing to perfection. The only thing I can do better is to put my electronics in static bags and put it in this. You're also going to need a pair of scissors, a Sharpie, some foil tape, and you can just buy this at the hardware store. This is what uh, heating and cooling people use to seal uh, the ductwork. And what I used was a simple yoga mat. You can buy these at Walmart for, I think this was like 6 or $7.00. So all told, it maybe cost me about $30, $35. So what I did to start out with in making this is I started out with a large sheet of paper. And unfortunately, I threw it away once I got this done because I didn't think I needed it anymore. Is I took a large piece of paper and I set down in here. Now you'll notice that this is not square. It'd be great if it was square size. It wouldn't be that hard to do. But since it's square, I'm going to have to cut a curve in that yoga mat to make it fit flush around all the outsides. So if I take this yoga mat that I've already cut out, you will see that there is a curve to it. It's not flat. It's not square. It's got a curve to it. What I did was I took a large sheet of paper and I just set it down in there and kind of eyeballed it and kind of just started cutting this curve which is what's along the bottom here, this inside curve, so it would fit flat against the bottom and kind of take this cone shape out. And then I simply mark the outside ed top edge of the paper and cut it and use that as a template to cut this. And I cut it a little bit proud so I could refine it a little bit. And then what was left of that piece, I cut a circle to cover the bottom. Now, before I put that stuff in, I want to prepare the can itself. There are two seams, one here. And what I did was I taped those up with that foil tape. I taped all the way down the bottom. And I even came up around this lip on both sides. So that's sealed. And you want to make sure that when you seal this, you seal these two rivets. There's also a seam here along the bottom. What I had to do was take short pieces and put them in and overlap them and, you know, probably 10 or 12 pieces around the outside edge of that or the bottom rim of that to get the bottom of it uh, sealed up. And then the last thing you want to do is put your tape on these two spots here where the handle comes through the lid and holds on. You want to seal all those little gaps to keep the radiation out of this. Now what I did on this is I just went ahead and covered it with ordinary uh, cloth duct tape just for a physical protection to protect that foil tape. So all you have to do is once you get your uh, mat or whatever you're using material cut out, you simply, I just that was pretty simple to cut, it was just a matter of cutting it down. I will give you a little hint when you're cutting these. Don't go too crazy on cutting large pieces. Cut them a little bit at a time. And it may take a little bit extra time, but it'll save you from having to go back to the store and buy another one of these just to 
get it to fit. But once you have it cut the right size, it fits right in there. And of course, it's going to fall down on me when I tip this up, but I never store them that way. But you can see how nice and snug that fits. There's This basically insulates the electronics from here, so any electromagnetic uh, energy that strikes this can't propagate into the electronics inside. This insulates it and keeps, keeps it from uh, getting into those electronics and burning them up. I don't do anything under the lid because I just decided, you know, all I have to do is just keep it down below this line here. And as long as nothing is touching the lid, the air will insulate it. And finally, if you want to uh, complete the sealing process, you can take the foil tape and go around this outside edge all the way around once your electronics are in it, of course, and that way you can put it away and, and be reasonably sure that your electronics will survive a uh, EMP attack or a coronal mass ejection or something like that. The only problem with using tape is if you want something out of there like I do on a regular basis, you've got to pull the tape off. This rips up real easy when you try to take it off. It gets to be a mess. So there's two solutions. One is do like I do and simply not use anything. If you choose a uh, container that has not been dented, and they're hard to find sometimes because they get dented in the shipping, as well as a lid that's not dented, you're probably going to have a good enough seal between the surf, the outside rim here of the can and the inside rim of your lid to seal it off from EMP energy getting inside of it. The other option, if you are going to want to go in and out of it and you want the best protection you can in your can, is to take steel wool and push up into here and just take short and small pieces of steel wool, push them up in there, and that will do a very go, go a long way towards uh, reducing that energy propagation between the body and the lid. And that way, if you do want into back into it, you simply pull it up, your steel wool will fall back down, do what you want to do, push the steel wool back up in there. But anyway, that's how I built a uh, Faraday cage for 1826, I don't know, about 30, 35 dollars for my first one, and of course I've got plenty of tape to do the second one. I went ahead and bought a second one because that's what I'm going to do because this one's actually got filled up. The book is $13.50. Uh, definitely well worth getting, if nothing else, for this chart. And like I say, the only way I can improve on this, should I tape it here, is to put my electronics in here sealed up in foil bags. Now you can probably get away with putting it in like uh, aluminum foil you know, putting things into a um, non-conductive uh, material, just wrap it with a paper, or not a paper towel, but a bath towel or something, and then wrapping it with uh, aluminum foil, placing it in here, and your your electronics are probably going to survive just about anything. Definitely get this book if you get a chance. Uh, it's, it's worth having and it's worth reading, and like I say, this chart right here is worth the price of the book alone. So with all that, this is Backpack Hat coming at you with this trail tip. Uh, be safe out there, and I'll see you out there in the trail.